I am chosen. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say. Today is our special service where we, help, we will have Communion Sunday. Um, so for those of you who are joining us online, um, would you be able to prepare for yourself um, the elements that we can have for Communion? Um, we will be having Communion today right after worship time. Um, so yeah, just for the experiment of our joint service with the youth and young adults along with the adults, um, in the past, when it's on a Communion Sunday, we actually have the youth and young adults join in in the last 10 minutes of a service time. But as for a change, we're actually going to have, at least for today, we're having it a whole combined service. Um, but we will be having our announcement and then our worship time um, and then uh, Communion, then we will go into the service time. But today we would like to bring to you a big announcement. Um, as we mentioned in the youth ministry, actually on September 1st, we officially have a senior pastor. So join Sunday service at September 18th. Whenever it's a joint service with the English, Cantonese, and Mandarin, it will be at 10 a.m. service. So we want to welcome you um, to be coming to the uh, service. But remember, the time is 10 a.m., so don't show up at 11.50. Um, lunch will be provided at the end. Um, yeah, so we want to invite you. Along with that, we would like to invite you to continue to, to pray for the leaders of the church and the direction of this church. So other than praying for Pastor Eric, we will be having a pastor and elder retreat on September the 10th. Um, and so this picture, we are missing one female as our elder, and that is um, Ruby Gao. I don't know if she's even here. Um, but yes, we will be having a, oh yay, yes, we will be having a combined time of elder and pastor just to pray and to discern the uh, leading of the church direction. So we want to invite you guys to participate in the prayer part um, for just wisdom, discernment, as well as um, courage to exercise leadership in this church. Um, on a very similar note with the planning, I don't know if some of you have been noticing some young adults trickling into the English service. Have you noticed? Can you raise your hand? A little bit? Okay, so they have like probably hit at the back somewhere. Um, we are in the still in the position and transitioning of 
figuring out the young adult ministry. And so for those of you who are in young adult, um, we want to extend that invitation first to you. If you're interested in the planning process, you are free to welcome to come and speak to me about the planning, but we want to hear your voice and involve you in the planning process. But as you guys probably know, like some of them have been coming in and out. It has always been an open invitation for them to either join the youth or join the um, adult ministry. But we have mentioned to them, I kind of see them as above 18 is an adult. Like for me, the line is just pretty simple, minors or adults. And so based on that, they could be planning where they want to go. Um, but on top of that, other than the Sunday service, actually there's a lot that goes into just young adult ministry planning. Um, that includes fellowship, which they do not have at the moment. Um, so that we would like also again to have prayer um, for the wisdom of the planning, um, but as well as pray for the team that are forming in the midst um, to be thinking about the next steps for the young adult ministry. But on that note, um, that might be a new thing that's coming up that I feel like needing to be reminded of. Um, it's a membership. So I don't know how many of the English has already been part of the membership, but as we are having a flood of young adults, um, it's actually good for us to remind that if you are a baptized Christian over 18 um, and you subscribe to the purpose, vision, and the statement of faith of this church, um, and as long as you're not like part of another church in SoCal, you are actually eligible to be applying for the church membership. Um, so if you are interested in the category, you are welcome to um, apply for the membership. You can find either me, Pastor Monjins, um, or even like Pastor Andrew, just to voice out your interest, and we will be forming a class um, for membership class for those who are interested in the membership. And then here is to get notified. This might be a little bit youth and young adult related. If we are in a new school year, so if you guys can update your database, so for a better um, upcoming like notification that for the minors, you, you definitely need to fill out your database because for emergency contacts. For young adults, um, again, like we're in the process of planning. So for future communication, it will be best if you could fill out the uh, form. All right, this was last Friday, just a few days ago. Um, we kicked off our youth and young adult were Friday nights with golf, uh, mini golf. So I imagine it to be indoor um, with like all those LED lights, but in reality it was outdoor in the midst of heat wave, but God has blessed us with great weather because you don't feel the heat at all. So we broke into five teams. Um, each team's had their fun, but other than mini golf, they also had go-kart. Um, I wasn't part of it, so I can only like take a sneak peek of those pictures of some of our youth who are just getting started. They said this is the beginning of them to learn driving lessons. Um, does it work that way for those who actually drive? No? Okay, I think some things are the same, like steering wheel. But no, like the steering wheel is a lot easier in real cars than in a go-kart. Um, so just to go over the little bit of the logistics for Friday night, usually on our first Friday, we have social events that could be in church or outside of church. And we have second and third Friday, um, more a regular fellowship um, that is usually at church. On the fourth Friday, um, we want to dedicate that time to the ministry team or the serving team for Friday. So the fourth Friday will be off for our youth um, Friday nights. And then on the fifth uh, Fridays of the month, that will also be off. But that being said, even though second and third Fridays are our regular, actually this third Friday, we are planning to join the SGV worship night. Um, so if you are interested, they are opening up their place um, for the other FEC churches to be joining in the youth-led um, worship night. And so we want to like just be inspired. And I heard really good things, at least from Charmaine, who had experienced that when she was in grade seven. Um, so she has great memories. And I thought it will be a great inspiration just to watch other youth leading worship um, along with the training. But I don't know if they have the training part. All right, finally, the last announcement. 
Um, this is from uh, the GCDC. They have been having a celebration night, but actually during COVID time, they have to pause their um, fundraising dinner. But again, they are starting up this fundraising dinner um, this year. It'll be September 11th. Um, I heard it's a nine course meal. Uh, and I thought the ticket will be very expensive because it sounds like a wedding banquet, but it's actually $60 for a ticket for the nine course meal and that also helped towards funding um, the Ministry of um, GCDC in their Upward Bound Center. All right. Um, for the youth, just so you know that um, we're not doing passing around the offering here, um, but the offering box is there at the door. So if you guys have prepared the offering, um, you guys can put in your offering as you leave today. All right, can we stand up as the worship team prepare themselves? But in the meantime, I would love to just invite you to like cut across a little bit to greet one another. It doesn't have to be the older gen greeting the younger gen. I would love to invite the brave souls of the younger gen to extend that hospitality as well to the English ministry as well. All right, let us just take this time to worship. Crossover. There you go, Jocelyn. <laughs> I'm scared this will shut off. I'm scared that I'm gonna mess up. Here you'll be fine. Slow to speak. All right, good to see everyone excited. Let's uh, get back to our seats. And if I could have some help from the sound team to turn my guitar down just a little bit. Thanks. Cool. All right, so as we prepare our hearts for worship this morning, we're going to start by reading a psalm of praise, uh, Psalm 145, verses 1 to 12. So we're going to have the help of two of our youth here, uh, Wade and Joyce, going to help us read that. Psalm 145. I will exalt you, my God the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works and I will proclaim your good deeds and celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise him, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might, so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Amen. So Lord, we just thank you. We come before you and we want to give you our whole hearts in worship and praise today. So we ask that you bless our voices, uh, bless the rest of the service, the message, and in Jesus' name, amen. Who the 
drown in perfect love. You rescue me, now I will stand and say, I am a child of God. You split the seas again. You split the sea so I can walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescue me, now I will stand and sing. I am a child of God. And I'm no longer such a wonderful uh, and powerful God. We just give you all the honor and praise today. And we thank you that you are holy. You are the only perfect one, the perfect father. And we just thank you that we can be children of your sons and daughters. Um, so we just uh, yeah, give today to you. And in Jesus' name, amen. Can we invite our senior pastor to come before us to lead us into a time of communion? So we are gonna change the slides to communion slide. Each month, we have a communion service to remember our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus sacrificed for us. Why did he do that? 
sometimes we don't quite fully understand because of his love. He's willing to go up to the cross. In our prayers, we often praise the Lord. God, you're so good to me. You heal me. You help me to resolve this challenge. In our prayers, we pull up our need in front of him. We pray for each other. We also pay for missions and the needs of the church. But one thing is commonly missed is a prayer of repentance. Or we may include the following in our prayer. Lord, forgive my sins. But ask yourself, what specific is your sin? You can have a very generic statement, forgive my sins. What about your pride? What about your anger? What about you're not willing to forgive other people? I would like all of you to take a moment to close your eyes. Think about one thing you really need God's forgiveness for your sin. It's not a generic sin, it's your sin. For I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the light he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. For those who have been baptized, I would like to invite you to come up to the table. First row, second row, third row, come up. After you get a cup, go to the side and get back to your seat. So for those who have been baptized, I invite you to come up now. For those who receive the cup, I would like you to stand up first. Slowly take out the bread.
you break the bread, representing Jesus' body is broken for you. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, "This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until, until he comes." So let's open and take this cup. Dear Lord, thank you for your sacrifice for us. Sometimes we forgot we didn't appreciate, we didn't treasure this special relationship with you. We just take things for granted. Not when we have our sins. Let's be specific in asking for your forgiveness. It's not just forgive my sins, Lord. Forget my anger. Forgive my pride. I don't want to talk to this brother or sister anymore. Lord, give me the love. As you mentioned in the scripture, love your enemy. The brother or sister is not even your enemy. He or she just says something you don't want to hear. Help me, God. Help me to remember what you've done for me. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, sing. We pray. Amen. Please be seated. Is this TV on? Oh, good. Thank you, Thomas. First, thank you for this opportunity that I can come to today's English in the Comedian Service. It's good to see everyone together with young adults, with our adults, with our youth, with our guests and new friends. Such a wonderful group. Such a wonderful group. So.、Um, I would like to ask you something. What do you see? Do you know what it is? Now, this type of picture, you need to kind of like lose focus. You cannot just like stare at that picture. You need to lose. You know, okay, do this. Lose your eye and try to see what it is. Can anyone see that? Raise your hand if you see that. No, no one can see that. What is that? I see some random pattern. Okay, last, 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 last. Who can see that? Oh, what's that? What's that? I can't hear. A what? Ah,、uh, no. But good guess. Okay. It's a shark. Oh, I almost got that. Next time you need to say that out. Almost get that. Now, why do I want to show this picture? Sometimes we think we can see, but we actually cannot. This type of picture, you require some skills. The skills is like you need to. I know it's this difficult to see on this screen, but you know if you have a like this picture on paper, when you lose the focus, you need to focus beyond the paper. And maybe a few inches, you know, behind, you know, the, you know, more in depth. Then you are built about to. You can see that. So we can learn a lot from this picture. We, very often, we think we can see, but we actually can't. So let's go back to the scripture, chapter nine, in Acts. What happened to at that time is Saul, not Paul yet. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He ran to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, 
So that if he found any there who belong to the way, the new faith, the Christian faith, whether man or woman, he may take them as prisoner to Jerusalem. What's the background of Saul? We know that, you know, Saul, I know something about him, but I do not quite know everything about him. So let me give you some background who Saul was. His nationality, he's a Jew. It's very special. He got a woman passport so that he has a very special privilege. He was also born in Tarsus. So this is what we know. If you have the woman passport at that time, it's good. You can get a lot of special privilege. Where did he graduate? He graduated from Harvard at that time, not now. So he studied, you know, famous, you know, Jewish teacher, Gamaliel. So is, you know, if you can study under this very famous Jewish teacher, that means, that means you must be really, really good. So in comparison, nowadays, oh, we say those, you know, who go to Harvard, you know, Yale, Stanford, right? It's like in comparison, you know, to those. And religion, is it, he's a Pharisee, but he's not just a Pharisee, he's a super Pharisee. He can do whatever it takes. If, you know, I need to defend my Jewish faith, I will do whatever. I will make sure that, you know, no one else, you know, will fall out of track and continue on the Jewish faith. So that's why when he heard that, oh, there is a new faith called Christianity, I need to destroy that. So that is what, who Saul was. Now, at this point, his name is not changed. He is not called Paul yet. So in his mind, think about, you know, based on this background, what is in his mind? Let's, you know, try to think about that. He will think, oh, this Jesus, this Jesus of Nazareth, he's dead already. Come on, guys. Do you expect a crucified dead body will be the Messiah? No way. Based on scripture, our Messiah is victorious. Riding on a right horse, entering the town. Come on, you know, he's crucified. He's dead already. No way. If you, you know, you, all these people, you know, these people, you're saying that? Jesus of Nazareth, he is the Messiah. You must be kidding me. Also, he knows the scripture. So based on the scripture, Deuteronomy chapter 21, 23, according to our law, anybody who is hung on a tree is cursed. If a cursed person hung on a tree and you still telling me he is the Messiah, I just can't believe you. Come on. Now, I also hear that some of you mentioned he can turn water into wine and he can heal the blind and, you know, he can make, you know, the, uh, the cripple, you know, can walk after some, so many years. But let me tell you, the power is not from God, it's from Satan. The way in my conclusion, even though you don't want to listen to me, I, let me give you a conclusion. This is a very dangerous set. I need to eliminate it, whatever I can do. Now, Saul at that time, he thought he could see everything. He was quite, quite clear about you know, what he's doing. So for those you know, who believe in the new faith, no way that you know, what you guys are doing are just wrong. Let's come back to now, come back to us. Let's think about us. Sometimes, you know, you hear people say, before people accepted Christ, oh, I don't need Jesus. Who cares? I don't need Jesus. Christianity is only for those who are weak. The strong one do not need to believe in Jesus. The strong one do not have to believe in Jesus. Uh, Christian faith is just like, you know, a spiritual chicken soup. A spiritual chicken soup. Now, let's take a look, you know, for this, you know, what, what it should be. John 14, 6, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. It's good that sometimes, you know, you invite a, a, a Chinese-speaking pastor because I can give you a Chinese lesson, Chinese 101. What is this word? Then the younger one, what is that? I only, know, I only speak English, you know. That's why I need to teach you one word, just one word. Then you can show it to your dad and mom, you know, later on. This word, there's two components. It's the lamb covering me. 
is righteousness, is the lamb covering me. So the Chinese word has a very special meaning. Without the lamb, we just cannot come to God. But with the lamb using his blood to cover me, then I can go to the Lord. Some people will say, you, you hear some people say, oh, you know, you know what? After I, I die, I'm, I will be with Jesus. Think about this statement. Regardless of faith, when I die, I will go to Jesus. Let me ask these people a different question. Why are you so confident you can go to Harvard? It's not whether you want to go to Harvard. It depends on whether Harvard will accept you or not. You cannot say, oh, I'll go to Harvard tomorrow. Uh, maybe I didn't want to take a, take a day off, maybe the day after. We just cannot be confident that Jesus will accept, except we trust him. We cannot say we can go to Harvard or Stanford except when they accept me. And the Bible teaches us the only way, the only way is through Jesus. Now, another common thing people will say, oh, you know, Christianity is only for weak people. I'm the strong one. I can handle everything in my life. I came here as an immigrant. I worked hard. I established my finance. I bought my house for the younger one. I don't need to study. I got straight A. I can learn an instrument. Within two weeks, I learned how to play guitar. What's the big deal? I'm strong. Come on. Let's take a look for this passage. Stephen, through the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God. And Jesus standing at the right hand of God, look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. When they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. We read this passage. How many have read, read this passage before? Only a few hands. You guys don't read Bible? What do you read? Korean drama? I also watched that too. There's no conflict. Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Do you think Stephen is weak or strong? Stephen is not weak. If he's weak, oh, I'm not doing that. You know, please forgive me. I don't want to die. I want to get out of here. Please save me. I don't want to die. No, he didn't say that. He said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. I'm ready. I'm willing to sacrifice my life for the Lord. But at the same time, Lord, do not hold this sin against them because they don't understand. Do you see strength or weakness from Stephen? Another thing I would like to talk about, Christian faith is like a spiritual chicken soup. Yes, if indeed this is a spiritual chicken soup, you have the total freedom of take it or leave it. What if the faith is about eternal life and eternal death? What if? If this is eternal life and eternal death, I would like you to think about that, to reconsider that. If this is just a chicken soup, that's fine. You can go to have like char siu fan, barbecue pork rice, or egg tart, or beef noodle, whatever you want. You can eat that or leave that, or in and out burger, my son's favorite. But not, this is about eternal life and eternal death. This is serious, guys. Okay, we talk about whether, you know, some non-believers, you know, whether they, from their viewpoint, you know, we talk about that. Oh, what about after we accepted Christ, after for those who came out, take a cup, go back to your seat, for this group, it's okay. I just need to get eternal life. I don't want to pay effort. I just want to take it easy. The Bible, let me read a few verses to you. To you. First Corinthians chapter 3, 12 
to 15. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, good, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is because the day will bring it to light. You will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been, been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the frames. Do you want to build a house with gold, silver, costly stones? Oh, it's quite expensive. Yes, it is. That's the cost. Why don't we just like get some wood, hay, straw, easy to build, you know, it takes about two hours to build the whole thing. Would that be a good option? Maybe. But when there's a fire, when God tests your work with the fire, if you're using wood, hay, or straw, there's only one outcome. They all burn up in five seconds. For those you know who build this house with a cost, with gold, silver, costly stone, you will endure the fire. The Bible say you will receive a reward. The first point I would like to say, you think, you think the keyword you can see, yet you haven't seen. Number of years ago, I went to visit a old pa a retired pastor. This retired pastor, you know, said this thing to me. I still remember it today. He mentioned, how many of you speak Cantonese? Some of you. Let me say in Cantonese. I think it's more, more easy to reflect that. This is good, you know, to pitch in English congregation. A, lot, a large number of you, you know, speak Cantonese. What he said, 每一个人都有一套想法. Let me do some translation. What's that? What was this Canton is about? I thought we are done with the Chinese, you know, that righteous word, right? Do we have a second lesson? Yeah. After you took the 101, you have a 102. This is the 102. It means that each person has a way of thinking. It a, has a set way of thinking, which cannot easily be changed. As we grow, regardless of your age, your belief system is starting to solidify. You think you're right? You think I knew it? You think I got it? You don't need to explain to me. That's the issue. Okay, young people, sorry, let me say that. That's the issue when someone becomes a teenager to the time he or she becomes a parent. Because at this life stage, he or she thinks he, she knows everything. But until the day he or he, she becomes a parent, then, oh, what my dad and mom said is actually has some value. But for the more older generation, it's about the same. Sometimes, you know, we, we go on for that. I've seen that. I got, you know, I eat all the salt, you know, more than what you eat rice. But is it right that, you know, you're always right? We need to question that. You think you can see, yet you haven't seen. Let's continue on the word of God. As he near Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eye, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind, and did not eat or drink anything. Why Saul wanted to go to Damascus? Anyone make a guess? Why? Why didn't he go to Egypt? Why didn't he go to Hong Kong? I really like this young gentleman. He's very courageous, you know, in answering all the questions. So what's the, what's the answer? Do you raise your hand? Oh, yeah, he did. But sorry, you know, since, okay, as I'm getting old, it's not, it's not because, you know, of, you know, whether you, I, I can really hear because, you know, I, uh, my, at, at my age, you know, I apologize, you know, my hearing, my, my seeing, you know, it's, it's getting weaker. Okay. So let, let me tell you why he went to Damascus. The reason 
remember at that time, the whole empire is under one empire, the Roman Empire. From Jerusalem to Damascus, and Damascus is the gateway to other parts of the Roman Empire. Saul heard about the, the church and also the gospel, the way he's starting to get more popular in Damascus. So his concern is like, if I don't stop that at Damascus, guess what? Maybe, you know, the, 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 the Christians at, you know, in that new location will spread out to Europe, was going to the Eastern Asia, or maybe, you know, even to go to other parts of the Roman Empire. So before he spread so fast, let me just go there to stop that right away. That is the reason, you know, why Saul at that time wanted to bring the legal paperwork to go there to get all those, you know, uh, Christians and bring it back to the Jerusalem. When you read about these few verses, verses three to nine, there's some several things, you know, if you pay attention, it's special. First, you know, verse three, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. There's a light from there. There's a light from there. According to the natural law, when the light is coming from this direction, what do you see? For those you know, who get closer, you see a shadow, right, from this light. From this light, you also see a shadow on this side. Makes sense, right? Optics, right? Optics, high school, high school, high school stuff. Verse 3, they talk about the light is from everywhere. The light source is like a round, a round source. So there's no shadow. This light is special because this is from above. And also, he fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Saul so immediately knew that is the Lord. The voice, if you go to another, another verse in Hebrew, in the book of Hebrew, chapter 26, and you can see that the language chosen in this conversation is in Hebrew. So that Saul at that time knew that is the Lord Jesus. Also for the men around them, they heard some loud voice, but they have no idea, you know, what's happening? What's happening to Saul? He just like, you know, fell and then, you know, just, you know, he just like murmuring and then, you know, seems to be talking to someone, but we didn't, we didn't hear anyone. Only Saul can hear the conversation, the actual word, but not the men around them. Okay, so, what happened next after a few seconds or a few minutes? So I got up, was able to see at that time? No, before that he could see. He was leading a team. He was leading a legal team, a persecuting team going to Damascus, preparing all the ties and, you know, to lock up all those Christians and bring them back, you know, to Jerusalem. He's ready. But right now, when he got up, he just can't see. Before he was the leader, leading the people to Damascus. After that, he was led by those men going to Damascus. Saul can no longer see. He can not see. But guess what? He is about to see. What? He cannot see? He is about to see? What do you mean, Pastor Eric? John Newton, do you know what song he wrote? What, one of the famous songs. A lot of people know that. And you know the history. He's a British sailor, and he himself, he once you know, was involved you know, in a slave trade. And, but later on, he was a prominent, very important slavery abolitionist. He wanted to stop all the slavery. When he was still the owner of the slave trade, he made a lot of money. Went to Egypt, I mean, went to uh, Africa to get the slave and then, you know, ship it, you know, to UK, ship it to Northern Europe, you know, other parts of the world, right? Make a lot of money. But one time when he was on the ship, there's a big storm. When there's a big storm, he asking, God, do I miss something? Was I not able to see anything? God, the whole ship is about to sink. Please help me. Please help me. He prayed this prayer. After he prayed the prayers, the storm began to die down. And after that, at the age of 23, he repented. 
From that point on, he is involved in the movement to stop the slavery trade. This is amazing grace. <laughs> let me try to sing that. I don't have a good voice as Pastor Andrew and Pastor Leona, but let me try to sing that. Amazing grace, how sweet the song that save a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was bright, but now I see. He was not able to see, but now he see. Do we need to unsee something before you can see something? How many of you have been to this building? Raise, just raise your hand. Do you know what this building is? Some people know. Some people know. Only a few. You guys are so healthy. You guys don't need to go to a hospital. A couple of months ago, this is a Methodist hospital. I went to this hospital. Um, there is a Cantonese member. I, to, I want to visit her. So I asked the reception, and uh, uh, this patient, you know, is in staying in which room? So the receptionist, you know, uh, tell me, you know, uh, she's in 242. 242, then, then I just to be special. It's second floor, right? Yeah, I say, yeah, second floor, 242. So I went you know, into, the, um, into the elevator and, okay, put two, second floor, come out. And right in front, there's a simple directory. I, I saw the sign. Okay, listen carefully. One to 10, this way. 11 to 20, this way. 21 to 30, this way. 31 to 40, this way. Very clear. What's wrong with that? My question is, where's 242? You have 1 to 10, 11 to 20, 31 to four, uh, 21 to 30, 31 to 40, but I'm going to 242. I was very smart, I think. 242 is closer to 1 to 10 or closer to 31 to 40. Of course, it's closer to 31 to 40, right? I'm using my smartness to go on this side. Going to 31 to 40, there's a ward, there's no one outside, you need to call, make a phone call. So I pick up the phone, I call, hey, I'm, um, I would like to see a patient in 242. Then the nurse laughed. I don't know what's wrong. I just want to see a patient. He laughed. Then uh, the nurse, the guy came out. Don't worry, you are just one of them. What? What do you mean you are just one of them? Then I asked, I told him I was planning to go to 242. I know, don't worry. I know, I know. You know what? I didn't, I didn't even, <laughs> even <laughs> just follow me. Just one. What? You know. He didn't even do any explanation and you know he didn't even say anything he said just follow me then i follow him then you know follow him is a long long uh, corridor at the end i i i very you know observe very carefully where's the sign you know where's the 200 or 300 at least you know i want to see that sign there's no sign but at the end of the corridor that nurse just told me just go inside you will see what are you sure do you work here? He did. And he said, just go inside. I paused for about 0 0.5 seconds. I, because there's just no sign outside. So I passed, I, I say, thank you. Thank you very much. Then I went through the door. 242 is right in front of me. Why did I pick up this sharing? Sometimes we think we can see. You have some idea about what things should be, where things should be located. You need to unlearn that. You need to unsee that. If you do not unlearn and unsee, you will never go to 242. You also need to be humble enough to listen to other people's advice. You think you, you know where to go for 242, but the person working there he has been going through a lot of this. He gave you this advice, 242, just follow me. If I don't follow him, if I'm prideful, okay, I don't want to waste my time because I'm supposed to, you know, meet the patient five minutes ago, I'm late already, you know, just, just tell me, you know, don't, 
don't bring me to you know some location. I don't need any drink or anything to eat. I just want to go to 242. You need to humble yourself, following the advice of others who has been going through many, many times. In the end, I went to the room. God did great things on that day. The church member that I visited accepted Christ during that visit. And she was one of those who was baptized two weeks or three weeks ago. Saul had to lose his religion before he could gain the righteousness of Christ. So the second I would like to see, you cannot see, yet you start to see. The last few verses, then Ananias ran to the house and entered, placing his hands on Saul, and he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you are coming here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scale fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. For three days, Saul was fine. For three days, he did not eat or drink anything. He's emptying himself. He's asking for forgiveness from above. He was questioning, what was I doing before? He prayed. In the vision, he saw a man named Ananias came to him and placed his hand on him to restore his sight. When he's emptying himself, now he's able to see. He's able, his spiritual eyes starting to open. What happened next? We read from these few verses. Ananias accepted the call you know, from the Lord, and then he went to see Saul and then baptized him. Now, sometimes, how many of you are using GPS to go to a new location? Let me, let me ask you different. How many of you do not use GPS to go to a new location? I think the younger one, oh, I don't drive, so I don't use GPS. If you want to go to any location, who where you know you are not familiar with. Basically, you know, you have no, no choice. You have to use GPS. Let me tell you, what if the, your phone is running out of battery? Oh gosh, I'm in central California. All I can see is a whole bunch of cows and you know desert and 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 that's it. My phone is too hot and it stopped to work. And some of you, how many of you going to death ready? Do you know how hot is death ready this day? 127. The phone, your phone will melt, basically. You're using GPS to go to a destination, but when you pass through that rally, your phone just die on you. Oh, I don't know where to go. Should I just stay here? Don't stay there, because you will melt too. Sometimes each of us have something we anchor on. Your skills, your experience, your understanding of things based on what you learn, what you perceive. Remember, all these things can be shaken. All these things, you cannot rely on them 100%. The only thing, the only person you can rely on 100% is our Lord Jesus Christ. So, change. He was baptized. After he was baptized, he becomes a different person. How do we know that? In Philippians chapter 3, But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage that I may gain Christ. Cantonese lesson, 103. The Cantonese translation, Do you know what, what that translation means? Everything is poop. It's my direct translation, so that you, know, you, you guys just, just get that. Everything is poop. NIV, consider them garbage, that I mean, King Christ. When Paul 
after he changed his name. He thought he could see, but he couldn't see. When he could not see, now he can see. When he opened his eyes to see, it's truly a blessing. At the end of his life journey on earth, he said this, now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. This is what Paul ended his journey. He knows that I, I was blind. I couldn't see, but now I can see clearly. Even though I'm about to die on earth, I know that I have this eternal life, and Jesus, Lord, is waiting for me. He's waiting to award this crown to me. Anyone who wants to go to this for, for vacation? I, I do. Yeah, if you buy a ticket, please include me too, okay? I promise, you know, if this is on a Sunday, I pitch to you, okay? This is my dive. Uh, when I was in only two, there is a comic, you know, in Hong Kong. It's like two little pigs. Leona, have you know that, right? There's a two little pigs, right? Um, do you know anyone? You don't read comics? They love to go to this, this place, you know, for vacation. This is like their dream vacation place. For those, you know, young, oh, I, I, I can get that in Cancun. I can tell you, Cancun is not as good as this, even though I haven't been to both places. You make all the reservation, you book the ticket. You knew that where to eat and what to do, everything that you know you have a clear mind already. So you're going there on uh, October 1st, for example. So you pack your luggage and then and, and, you know, so make sure that you know your camera is like fully charged and everything ready. When you go to the airport, you give the passport to the travel agent. The travel agent or the airline employee open up the, uh, the passport. Oh, sir, sorry. The passport has expired. What? Are you, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Your passport expired yesterday. Sometimes we think we can go to a place we enjoy, we want to go. But today, if you don't prepare yourself, I'm not talking about salvation. If you don't prepare yourself, you may not be able to go to the place where ultimate enjoyment and satisfaction will be. When you open to see, open your spiritual eye to see, it's a blessing to truly see. Today, I want you guys to bring this home. Sometimes, you think you can see, yet you haven't seen. When you cannot see, now you're starting to see. When you open to see, it's a blessing to truly see. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you. Thank you for being our savior when we are willing to submit our life to you, we will get the best. However, my old self is still working inside me. My old self is blocking my true sight on you. Sometimes you forget about you. Sometimes what I think is right, but God, we know that it's not. God, if I don't know how to humble myself, give us, give me the courage to humble myself for us to see more of you, for me to enjoy being with you every day. I know God, in Christ, one day we go to the pace, be with you, that is the best. Give us this will, open our eyes so that I can see. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I would like everyone to think about what God has spoken, spoken to you. Every Sunday, when we come here, we are worshiping God. We are not attending a ceremony. 
we are worshiping God. When we worship God, give your 100% to the Lord. And you will get much more than what you could get before. Let's all stand with doxology. I, I don't remember the English word for doxology. So um, do we have a slide for that? No, we don't? OK. Leona, could you come up and then give the doxology? Or Andrew? All right. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Please remain standing. Receive the blessings. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all till the day we see Jesus Christ face to face. Amen. Please be seated. Spend some time to meditate and be dismissed.